Hello, and welcome back to the third chapter of the Lambda Cube Unboxed. In this video, we're going to introduce the first extension of the Simply Type Lambda Calculus, Lambda 2. This system is also called Lambda F, or the Polymorphic Lambda Calculus. Polymorphism in this context means that a single symbol can represent multiple different types. Until now, every typable term had only one type. While this might be intuitive and even useful, it can also be quite restrictive, as we're going to see now. Recall the identity function, typed as it was in the simply typed lambda calculus. It takes an x of type alpha as an input and returns it. Therefore, it has type alpha to alpha. But if we wanted the identity function, for not just one type, like natural numbers, but also another type, let's say strings for example, we would have to define a whole other identity function. And again for inputs of any type gamma. We might even want functions as an input, and those have an arrow type. The identity function makes sense for all kinds of types, and the structure of its own type stays the same throughout, input type to input type. But here's the problem. With only simple types, each identity function is bound to its specific input type, so we would have to create a new identity function for every new type to cover this. We could however use polymorphism to formalize that terms can inherit many types at once, so we're going to construct one identity function that deals with all possible input types at once. This is a form of polymorphism called parametric polymorphism. With parametric polymorphism, terms can be constructed so that they handle inputs identically without depending on their type. The idea is to allow abstraction not only over term variables, but also over type variables. Instead of claiming x to be of a type alpha for a free but fixed alpha, we say let alpha be any type and let x be of this type alpha. We do so by introducing a simple star, something like a supertype, which denotes that its inhabitant is a type. So lambda alpha of type star just means that alpha is a type variable. Of course, to get a specific identity function, we then always need to give this type abstraction any type like sigma. So we're also going to need application over types, and in order to compute it, reduction will also be defined for types. With this, we can see that from the polymorphic identity function, we can indeed get all kinds of identity functions, no matter what type the input should have. So here we see the identity function, even with type alpha, or a more complex type, alpha to beta to tau. Before we get into the formal definition of all of these notions, there's one more intuition that we need to cover. We've introduced a new kind of abstraction and corresponding application. The type of this new term is still unclear. We might use the supertype star to show the fact that the term takes a type as an input and then returns a function from alpha to alpha. But this becomes a bit problematic. At the moment, the type of the term is independent from the type the term gets as its input, although the output type heavily depends on it. The problem becomes clear when we compare this polymorphic lambda function to an equivalent one. We just change the names of the bound variables. Lambda beta, lambda x of type beta dot x. As it's another polymorphic identity function, it should have the same or at least an equivalent type. By our earlier approach, this term would have the type star to beta to beta. But this is not the same type as before, nor is it equivalent. We need to encode the polymorphism not only in the terms, but also in the types, basically a for all type. And what better way to achieve this than with an abstraction? We're going to use a pi type as the type of a type abstraction in a lambda term. This way, we get an abstraction in the type if we have an abstraction over a type in the term. With this, we've gathered all necessary intuitions and ideas to formally define the types and terms of the lambda2 calculus. Although it might look like a lot, remember that we're only extending the simply type lambda calculus, and therefore we're only going to add to its definition, so we've actually already seen the main parts of the new definition. As a reminder, this is the definition of types for the simply type lambda calculus. Each variable is a type by itself, and types can be combined by an arrow. And this is what the lambda2 definition looks like. We keep the variable and arrow types, and we just change the set t corresponding to lambda2. And we add pi types, where we take a type variable alpha and a type sigma, and we abstract alpha from sigma. So in lambda2, we gain a completely new structure for a type. The process for pre-type terms is similar. We start with the definition of the simply typed pre-type terms, with the variable rule, term application rule, and term abstraction rule. First, we put these three rules into lambda2 by adding the subscript 2 for the sets of types and terms. 
And then we only have to add two rules, type application and type abstraction. For the polymorphism, we wanted to allow an abstraction over a type, lambda type sigma dot m. This is the second abstraction rule. And to allow computation with such type abstractions, we also need type application as in the second application rule. So a term m can be applied to a type sigma. We have to be careful about the two kinds of application and abstraction that exist now in the calculus. Lambda alpha dot m applied to a lambda term n is not a valid pretype term, since lambda alpha dot m is a type abstraction, but n is a term. The same holds for lambda x of type alpha dot m applied to sigma, where the abstraction is over a term, but a type is applied. The application and abstraction need to add up, type with type and term with term. Otherwise, the construction isn't even part of the pretype term definition, let alone a possible legal term. When defining one step better reduction, we can again take the definition from the simply type lambda calculus and adjust it slightly. We just have to add the better reduction for type abstractions. When we apply a type abstraction lambda alpha dot m to a type sigma, we reduce this to m where we substitute every occurrence of the type alpha by sigma. Of course, we also have to add two new cases for type application and type abstraction to the compatibility rule. If a lambda term m is better reducible to a lambda term n, applying a type to both of the terms doesn't influence the reduction, and we can also add a type abstraction to both of them. Many step better reduction as the extension of one step better reduction, and better conversion as the symmetric extension of many step better reduction are defined analogously. Keep in mind that the concept of better reduction and better conversion only talks about legal terms as it did in the simply type lambda calculus. Better reduction, and with it better conversion, is not defined for pre-type lambda 2 terms. Now we can finally get to the derivation on the lambda 2 calculus. We keep all notations and conventions that we stated for the simply type lambda calculus. We also adopt all definitions about statements, declarations, contexts, and judgments, and we add the notion of a type declaration sigma of type star. Of course, we also have the notion of a legal term, which is every pre-type term for which we can find a context and a type, such that those three form a derivable judgment. If you're still unfamiliar with these definitions, we recommend that you revisit chapter 2.1 where we discuss those in more detail. There's one more important difference to mention for the definition of contexts in the lambda 2 calculus. In the simply type lambda calculus, a context was an unordered set of term declarations. We only had to declare the types of term variables, and the declarations didn't depend on each other. In lambda 2, we have to declare not only terms, but also types, and the terms depend on the types. A term can only have a type if it was stated that it is indeed a type. Because of this, a lambda 2 context is an ordered list of type and term declarations in which every type variable has to be declared before it's used in a term declaration. The first example, gamma 1, is a lambda 2 context. Alpha is used by x and y and declared first, and beta is also declared before it was used. Gamma 2, however, is not a lambda 2 context. It violates the definition in two ways. Firstly, alpha is never defined as a type even though it's used as one. And secondly, beta is defined after it's used. Now that we've established all basic definitions, we can come to the most noticeable change, which will be in the new and adjusted derivation rules. As you can see, there are more derivation rules compared to the simply type lambda calculus. These three rules are the ones that we know already. The only change is in the variable rule. We now check for a lambda 2 context instead of a lambda context. So we have to be careful that a type variable is introduced before it is used. Remember that this rule provides the axioms for a derivation. Since we haven't changed term application and term abstraction, these rules can be taken directly from the simply type lambda calculus. These three rules, however, are new. The formation rule provides more axioms for a derivation. It enables us to confirm that a certain type is actually a type in this context. And the other two rules are the type pendants to the application and abstraction rules for terms. We're going to go through this new rule we're going to go through the new rules in a bit more detail. The formation rule is once again pretty easy. Whenever gamma is a proper lambda 2 context, b is a type and all of its free type variables are declared in gamma. Given that, we can derive that b is a type under the context gamma. So a type is only properly defined if all of its parts are properly introduced. Remember that we're now able to abstract over types, so there are free and bound variables in types as well. So the following judgment is proper. Alpha is a type, beta is a type yields pi sigma dot alpha to sigma to beta. While this one is not, alpha is a type yields pi sigma dot alpha to sigma to beta. 
This rule is called second order abstraction, as it's an abstraction of some higher level objects. You can interpret it like this. Terms are of a certain type, so types are one level higher than terms. The rule states, if the context gamma with a type alpha yields m is of type a, then we can abstract the type alpha and derive gamma yields lambda alpha dot m is of type pi alpha dot a. So only if a type variable was introduced in the context can it be abstracted, and it only needs to be introduced. We can abstract every type variable from every term, while sticking to alpha conversion of course, as long as the type variable is introduced. The last rule is called second order application, for the same reason as second order abstraction. It enables the derivation of application of types. As with term application, this rule needs two premises. If we have a term m of pi alpha dot a under the context gamma, and also that b is a type under the same context, then we can derive that under gamma we have m applied to b is of type a, where we substitute every occurrence of alpha with b. So when we apply a term to a type, we immediately substitute the type for the bound variable. We saw this happening already when we analyzed the polymorphic identity function. With this, we have defined every necessary tool to work with the lambda2 calculus. We could analyze all properties that were observed for the simply typed and the polymorphic lambda calculus, but we're going to skip this for now and rather give an overview over all the properties after we've introduced every system. Then we can give you a table which will tell you which lemmata and which theorems hold for which system. I'll let you in on a bit of a secret, almost all hold for all systems. That's going to be all for today. In the next video, we're going to try to do some computations and constructions as we did for the untyped lambda calculus. Thank you very much for watching and see you then.